I have a child. How old are you, sweetheart? Three. She's three years old. She's in the parking lot standing here by herself with a pillow. No one's around. That she had blood on her. The hair is just sticking up on my arms. It's giving me chills. Oh my God, there's blood on the front seat of the car. A lot to, to be slapped with the fact that your husband is charged, A, for having an affair, and B, for a murder. On June 9th, 2016, a three-year-old girl was found wandering alone in a parking lot in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, near a car that was splattered with red bodily fluids. The little girl wasn't wearing any shoes, and her feet were covered in dried red bodily fluids. A good Samaritan who found her kept her calm as he called 911 to get help. What the girl revealed would send shockwaves through the city of Baton Rouge, leading investigators to uncover events, including a secret love affair, a love child, and the chilling murder of 40-year-old Lintel Washington. Why was Lintel Washington's life taken from her? And was the person who ended her life ever caught? Let's find out in the story of Lintel Washington, the pregnant mother who was murdered to hide an affair. Everybody was concerned for this teacher of the year that just vanished. On June 9th, 2016, a man named Leslie Parms arrived at the building where he worked at around 9 a.m. He parked his car, and as he was about to exit the parking lot, he noticed a little girl walking towards him. At first, there was nothing strange about it. The parking lot was across a residential building, so he thought she was just playing around. But when he looked across the parking lot to the building, he noticed there was no one outside watching the kid, which meant the kid was alone. He didn't know how old she actually was, but she looked to be too young to be walking around unsupervised. But that wasn't all. Upon a closer inspection, he noticed the little girl was barefoot. She looked tired and was clutching a pillow. He caught up with the girl and asked her where her mom was. When he didn't get any response from her, he called 911. I have a child. How old are you, sweetheart? Three. She's three years old. She's in the parking lot standing here by herself with a pillow. No one's around. While he was on the phone with 911, he continued asking the little girl if she knew where her mom was, but she still didn't answer. The 911 operator told him to stay on the line while she dispatched a unit to their location. The operator stayed on the line with Leslie and the little girl as they waited for officers to arrive. It was while they were waiting that Leslie looked down and what he saw sent chills down his spine. The little girl wasn't just barefoot. Her feet were covered in dry red bodily fluids. She didn't look to be physically hurt, so he had a sinking feeling. The red fluid wasn't hers. That she had blood on her. The hair is just sticking up on my arms. It's giving me chills. Regardless, Leslie asked the little girl if she was hurt, and for the first time since he saw her walking towards him, she responded, she said no. He then continued asking her questions, hoping to get her to talk about her parents, but she wasn't saying much about them. He noticed the pillow in her hands, so he asked her if she had slept in the parking lot all night. She told him she had slept in the car. He then asked her what car she slept in, and she pointed to a blue Toyota Corolla that was parked not far from where they were standing. Leslie decided to approach the car. He hoped he would find someone responsible for her in the car, but when he approached the car, he saw something shocking. There was red boldly fluid splattered all over the front seat of the car. Oh my God, there's blood on the front seat of the car. He also noticed a set of keys and a purse inside the car. Leslie turned to the girl and asked her if her mom was inside the car at some point. She said yes. At this point, officers arrived and looked inside the car. It didn't take long for them to declare it a crime scene. It was clear something horrific had gone down in the car and it was possible the little girl saw it all. The officers quickly ran the plates of the car and found out the car belonged to a woman named Lintel Washington. And upon further research, they discovered so did the little girl. But Lintel was nowhere to be found. And to add to the mystery, there was no trace of red bodily fluid anywhere but inside the car and on the little girl. The working theory of the officers at first was that Lintel was probably hurt somewhere and needed help. They launched a search for her to look for her. And in the meantime, tried to question the little girl. What she told them would lead them right to the perpetrator. Lintel Washington was born in 1975 in Louisiana to Calvin and Margie Washington. Lintel and her twin sister, Seintel, were the only children of their parents. Sadly, both of Lintel's parents passed away in 2010. Her and her twin sister became all that was left of the Washington family. 
Lintel was described as a caring, loyal, and trustworthy person who was very warm and always had a smile on her face. She was dedicated and hard working. Lintel was very passionate about educating children and her work as a teacher was proof of that. She loved imparting knowledge to kids, shaping their minds and preparing them for the future. And her students loved her. Lintel was married for a short time, but it didn't work out. A few years after her divorce, Lintel started dating a man named Darren. Darren and Lintel's relationship progressed very fast as they were both very drawn to each other. And it was a good relationship, or it was in the beginning. Not long into their relationship, they started having conversations about starting a family, but Lintel confessed to Darren that might not be possible. She had had surgery a few years before that left her with complications. The complications affected her ability to have a child. She told him she had tried many times before with no success. At this time, Lintel was in her mid-30s, so she was resigned to the fact that she would not have children. But miraculously, about a year into their relationship, Lintel found out she was pregnant. She was very excited. She had lived years of her life in agony that she wouldn't be a mom, but here she was, pregnant with her first child. Lintel and Darren were very happy to be having a baby and even talked about possibly getting married. But unfortunately, shortly after finding out they were having a baby, their relationship hit the rocks. Darren had an alcohol and narcotics problem and it had become intolerable for Lintel. So eight months into her pregnancy, Lintel found herself alone and about to have a baby. She didn't let it scare her though. She went ahead with the pregnancy and gave birth to a beautiful girl. After she had her daughter, Lintel decided she needed a fresh start, so she moved to Baton Rouge, where she got a job as a teacher at Brookstown Middle Magnet School. Lintel settled in quite well at Brookstown. She quickly made friends and thrived in her career. But while her career could be called successful, her love life could not. For some reason, Lintel attracted the worst sort of men, and though she was a hopeless romantic who fell for the wrong men quickly, she soon found herself heartbroken and alone when they showed their true colors. But the strings of bad relationships never stopped Lintel from falling in love again and giving it her all. And a few months into her job at Brookstown, Lintel met someone. When Lintel and Robert Marks met, it wasn't romantic at all. Robert was the new assistant principal at Brookstown. He had lived in Baton Rouge all his life and worked at Brookstown for quite some time until he got promoted to assistant principal. Robert was well-educated. He had a PhD in education and he was a valued member of the community. Not long after Lintel started working at Brookstown, she and Robert became friends. They started spending some time together, and soon enough, Lintel realized she had started developing feelings for Robert, but there was one big obstacle in their way. Robert was married. Robert's marriage was well known throughout Brookstown, although no one had ever met his wife, and he rarely wore his wedding ring. So at first, Lintel tried to fight her feelings for him, but then, Robert told her that he was unhappy in his marriage and was working towards a divorce. He told her he and his wife didn't even sleep in the same bedroom and they didn't live on the same floor. Robert told Lintel he lived in a two-story building and he and his wife split the space. He took one floor and she took the second one. Robert's explanation plus the fact that he was always available to her whenever she called convinced Lintel to let her guard down. After all, if he was still committed to his wife in marriage, he wouldn't have so much time on his hands to spend with her. Lintel's feelings for Robert grew stronger as they spent more time together. In fact, according to a friend of Lintel's, Robert was always at her house and he spent a lot of time with her and her daughter. They seemed like a happy couple. A relationship develops. The thing is, it's a secret relationship. Though they kept the relationship a secret, outside of Lintel's close friend, no one knew they were together. It was their dirty little secret. We didn't call ourselves friends, we called ourselves sisters. Robert managed to convince Lintel they should keep the relationship a secret until his divorce was final. Add that to the fact that he was basically her boss at work and things could get messy. If the administration found out, Lintel didn't need much convincing to hide their relationship. But everything changed when Lintel found out she was pregnant with Robert's child. Their relationship got even more complicated than it was before. But this didn't seem to phase either of them. They were both happy. They were having a baby, and Robert promised Lintel he was going to be there for her, supporting her through the pregnancy. Lintel was happier than ever. She had the job of her dreams, the man of her dreams, and they were bringing a baby into the world. Her life couldn't be more perfect, but that perfect life would soon be thrown into chaos. The chaos came a few months into her pregnancy, 
Robert told her he was going on a cruise trip with some of his family members. They were going to Panama City for a sort of family reunion. Lintel had no problem with it, and he left. But one day, Lintel went on social media and was shocked to discover that Robert hadn't gone on the cruise alone. He had gone with the same wife he was supposedly separated from. Lintel had seen a photo of them on the cruise on social media, and they didn't look like they were going through a divorce at all. They looked happy and very much in love. Lintel felt deceived and betrayed. She tried to call Robert for some explanation of the photo she found, but he was not picking up his call or responding to his texts. Suddenly, she had a feeling that Robert had lied about much more than his relationship with his wife. At this point, Lintel was five months pregnant and she was livid. She decided she was going to drive up to Robert's house and see how things were for herself. Though at the time, Robert and his wife were away on a trip, so it's not clear what Lintel was hoping to discover in the house, but she went anyway, and she discovered something. She found out that Robert didn't live in a two-story building like he told her he did. He lived in a single story, which meant what he told her about living on separate floors with his wife were all lies. Lintel knew then that Robert had been lying to her their whole relationship. Lintel was furious and she became determined to make Robert pay for what he had done. She promised herself that she was going to ensure Robert does his part when their child is born, starting with getting him to pay child support. This whole time, Lintel was spiraling. Robert was completely unaware. He was enjoying his vacation with his wife and had no idea the storm that was waiting for him back home. When Robert returned home, Lintel started sending him messages demanding that he told her the truth. It was clear their relationship was over and there was no coming back from the lies. All Lintel wanted to know at that point was whether or not Robert planned to be a part of their baby's life. She wanted to know if he would support their child and if he planned to tell his wife about her and their unborn child. Robert's lies were quickly catching up to him. On June 9, 2016, after officers got to the scene where Lintel's three-year-old daughter had been found, a specialized unit of Baton Rouge were called in to speak to Lintel's daughter. It was clear she had seen something terrifying, something that traumatized her, but she told them a few things that gave them an idea of what had happened to her. She kept saying, Mr. Robbie did the Bly DE, and my mommy was going to sleep with Mr. Robbie. While none of this made sense to the officers at the time, they did know that Mr. Robbie had something to do with what happened, but without a full name, there was no way of finding him, so they focused on finding out more about Lintel Washington. They found out the school she taught at, and a few officers went there to speak to someone in the school who might know who Lintel was and how to contact her emergency contact. When they got to the school, they spoke to the second assistant principal who knew Lintel, Jamisha Pinkfisher. They told her they had found Lintel's daughter wandering around a parking lot where they had also found her car, but there was no sign of Lintel anywhere. Jamisha told the officers that she knew where Lintel lived, but that was it. By the time Jamisha took the officers to Lintel's apartment complex, they saw police vehicles already there. She was not allowed to enter the apartment because it had become a crime scene. She was, however, allowed to see Lintel's daughter when she told them she was friends with Lintel. She was even allowed to take the little girl home so she could bathe and rest while the officers tried to find Lintel's next of kin. But before Jamisha left, they asked her if she knew who Mr. Robbie was, and she told them that was the name Lintel's daughter called Robert Marks. She also told them Robert and Lintel were in a relationship and Lintel was pregnant with his child. But that wasn't all she told them. She also told the officers that Lintel had just found out Robert was still married to his wife and she had been threatening to tell his wife that she was pregnant. She said, if you don't tell your wife, I will. That information caught the officer's attention immediately. Not long after Jamisha took Lintel's daughter home, she called the officers to tell them that Lintel's daughter kept saying, Mr. Robbie hurt mommy. Jamisha was then asked to take the little girl to the Child Advocacy Center in Baton Rouge, where she would be interviewed by experts so they could know what she knew. And she had a lot to say. What did you hear when mommy got hurt? She told the experts she had heard a boom sound when mommy got hurt. And when she was asked who hurt mommy, she said it was Mr. Robbie. She was then asked who put the red bodily fluid in the car. She replied, Mr. Robbie. Finally, she was asked if she saw mommy get hurt and she responded, yes, ma'am. Solving the crime comes down to a child. She, um, she had a good mama. She had a great mother. At this point, 
Investigators did not know the full story of what happened to Lintel Washington, but they were pretty sure Robert Marks was involved. He quickly became a person of interest in the case. While officers were at Lintel's house, they searched it for clues, and they found a few. They found ultrasound photos in Lintel's bag. They also found her cell phone, and when they checked the phone, they found she had Robert's number, and they found out she had called him a lot. They decided it was time to invite Robert in to hear what he had to say. Robert quickly admitted that he and Lintel had been seeing each other, and that his wife had no idea that he was having an affair, but when they asked him if Lintel was threatening to tell his wife the nature of their relationship, he denied that, saying if she was, it wasn't something she told him. They then asked Robert the last time he spoke to Lintel, and he said he had sent her a text, but she didn't respond to it, and he hadn't seen her since the night before when they met up at the parking lot of a local Walmart. According to Robert, he had met up with Lintel, and all they did was hang out for a few hours before he left. Robert told investigators he left for a restaurant called Twin Peaks, where he stayed for a few hours to eat pizza and catch the end of a basketball game playing on TV. The investigators got to work verifying his alibi, and in the meantime, they obtained search warrants for his cell phone. And while they were analyzing his phone, they began the search for Lintel Washington. They put a team together and started looking for her all over Baton Rouge. At this point, the fact that Lintel was missing had gotten everywhere, and the local media became involved in the case. Everybody was concerned for this teacher of the year that just vanished. While they were searching for Lintel, Robert's phone came back from analysis, and investigators found out he had lied to them. He had spent a whole to more time with Lintel than he said he did. They discovered that at around 8.19 p.m., Lintel had called Robert's number. She was near the parking lot of the Walmart, and Robert's phone pinged a location close to there. But that wasn't all. Both Robert's phone and Lintel's phone then traveled to an area called Scotlandville. And after that, both phones crossed the Mississippi River into an area called Ramah. Robert and Lintel's phone stayed at that location for a good 15 minutes before heading back to Baton Rouge. But when they got back to Baton Rouge, Lintel's phone went off the radar. Police are still looking into the timeline, trying to figure out when Robert Marks left his home. According to police, cell phone records put Marks near Rama and Rosedale, then back to Baton Rouge 15 minutes later, to these apartments. They also noticed that Robert had placed a call after Lintel's phone went offline. He made the call from the intersection of Newcastle Avenue and Sherwood Forest Boulevard. Lintel's daughter's statement, in addition to Robert and Lintel's phone records, was enough to take Robert Marks to the top of the suspect list. There was also the problem of Robert's alibi not checking out. Surveillance from the Twin Peaks restaurant, he said he was on the night of June 8th, told a different story. It showed that Robert hadn't even shown up to the restaurant at all that night. All the evidence gathered so far was enough for a judge to issue an arrest warrant, and on June 10th, 2016, Robert was arrested but he was not charged with murder. They were still working on those charges, but because Lintel's daughter told investigators that Robert had been the one who left her at that parking lot, it was enough to file child desertion charges against him. Now, as for the criminal investigation, police have arrested Robert Marks in connection with this case. Marks is the assistant principal at the school where Washington worked. That would keep him off the street while they worked on finding Lintel although all evidence suggested that they might not be finding her alive, but they continued looking for her nonetheless. This time around, they focused on the areas Robert had gone to that night, but it was still not easy to find her. Five days after Lentel's daughter was found in that parking lot, a man who worked in a sugarcane field around the area where both Robert and Lentel's phones pinged called the investigators. He told them he had found a body, the body was so decomposed due to the Louisiana heat that all he could tell them about the body was that she was a woman. About a week later, sugarcane farmers found Washington's body in this field, badly decomposed from the South Louisiana heat and humidity. Before the investigators got there, they already had a pretty good feeling that it was Lintel, but they still needed proof. Lintel's friend, Jamisha, told investigators what Lintel was wearing the day she was last seen to help them identify her, as well as any other descriptions that could help. At the end of the day, Lintel Washington was identified by her shoe. They had found one of it in the parking lot, where her daughter was found and the other one was on the body. They were now sure the body they found belonged to Lintel Washington and she was immediately transported to the coroner's officer for an autopsy. 
has been missing since last Thursday. Her body was discovered on Tuesday near Rosedale in Iberville Parish. Yesterday, the coroner ruled the death a homicide, a single shot wound to the head. The autopsy revealed Lintel's cause of death and confirmed that she was indeed pregnant 22 weeks along and the baby died as a result of Lintel's death. The unborn child that Washington was carrying also died as a result of the mother's death. There was no trauma to the fetus. A DNA test done on the baby also revealed that Robert Marks was the father of Lintel's baby. The, the child that she's currently pregnant with is his child. That information shocked not only Brookstown School, but the community at large. The fact that she and Robert were having an affair, she was now dead and Robert was arrested, was too hard to believe for many members of the community. After Lintel's body was found, investigators invited Robert for another interview, but this time around, he refused. But it didn't matter. Investigators had enough on him to charge him with second-degree murder. At that point, they hadn't yet figured out whether what happened to Lintel was carefully planned out or if it had occurred at the spur of the moment. So they felt it was safe to charge him with second degree while they gathered more evidence. While they were gathering the information, Robert's wife stood solidly by his side. She told investigators she didn't think her husband was capable of murder. She also did interviews telling everyone that her husband was innocent. Kayla Marks standing by her husband, Robert Marks, accused of killing his pregnant girlfriend and dumping her body in this Iberville Parish field. He's a loving husband, a loving wife. I just don't see how he could do it. Robert's wife told the press she was shocked when he was arrested because she knew the man she loves was not capable of doing what he was accused of. Wife Kayla says she is stunned by the arrest of her husband. She described a legal commentator, Nancy Grace, the man she loves is not a man accused of murder. A lot to, to be slapped with the fact that your husband is charged, A, for having an affair, and B, for a murder. She defended her husband, saying he had been at a friend's house watching basketball the night of the tragic event, so he couldn't have done it. But when she was asked if she knew the friend her husband had been with, she didn't have an answer. Where was your husband? He left to go watch the basketball game with a friend. What friend was that? Did you know the friend? I did not. Robert's wife was also asked if she knew about the affair her husband was having with Lintel, and she said she had no clue. Did you have any idea that they were having an affair? I did not. I did not. Not one clue. Little did she know, her husband was having an affair with more than just Lintel. Shortly after Robert's arrest made the news, a woman contacted the investigators, telling them she had some information about the night of June 8th. She told them she too had been seeing Robert and didn't know he was married. She told investigators Robert had called her at around 11.30 p.m. on June 8th, asking her to come pick him up at a location. She said she picked him up at the corner of Newcastle Avenue and Sherwood Forest Boulevard, making her number the number he called after Lintel's phone went offline. She said he was wearing his full motorcycle gear when she picked him up, but his motorcycle was not with him, so he told her to drop him off at the location where he parked it. It turned out the motorcycle had been parked at the parking lot of the Walmart, where he said he met up with Lintel. Investigators checked surveillance footage from the area, and it backed up what the woman said. Investigators now had a pretty good idea of what happened to Lintel. They believed Robert had ended her life because she threatened to reveal their secret affair to his wife. But that wasn't all. Further analysis of Robert's cell phone turned up a lot of damaging evidence against him. Investigators found bizarre Google searches on his phone, in May 2016, Robert searched for how to get a rifle. He also searched for an injection, Clorox, as well as what would happen to someone if you inject bleach into their bloodstream. On May 29, 2016, he also Googled what would happen if he failed to appear for a paternity test in court, as well as if the court could order him to pay child support even if the child did not bear his last name. While the information on his cell phone was pretty damning, investigators found more on his iPad they searched for weapons and what they could do. On May 28, 2016, he also Googled whether a father could be made to pay child support if his name was not on the birth certificate. The last piece of evidence that helped nail Robert Marks was a phone call he made on June 17, 2016. He called his sister after he was arrested, telling her to erase the search history on his iPad. With the new evidence, 
The second-degree murder charge against Robert Marks was bumped to first-degree murder as it was clear he had researched and planned the murder. He was also charged with feticide. It would take five years for Robert to be taken to trial, not because of a lack of evidence, but because of jurisdiction issues. Robert had initially been charged in Baton Rouge and indicted by a grand jury in Baton Rouge, but the case had to be moved to the jurisdiction where the murder had taken place. So another grand jury had to be reconvened in a different county to indict him, and that was what delayed the trial. But finally, in December 2021, Robert Marks faced charges for what he did to Lintel Washington and her unborn child. During the trial, Lintel's twin sister and friend testified, and her daughter, who had been there for the whole tragic event, also testified to what she saw. She was eight at the time of the trial. After a short trial, Robert Marks was found guilty of all charges filed against him and sentenced to life in prison. His wife filed for a divorce after his guilty verdict was read in court. As for Lintel's daughter, she is probably traumatized for life and would need intense therapy to live a normal life. She now lives with her father. Hey, thanks for watching. Our deepest sympathies go to the family of Lintel Washington. What are your thoughts on this case? Do you know of other similar cases? Let me know in a comment and before you go, make sure you like, subscribe, and hit that bell button. See you next time and stay safe.